welcome to ET Retail Cafe, an initiative by ET Retail. So today we have with us Kunjan Shah, who is the MD and CEO of Bata. We would love to know about him as well as the journey of Bata, how it's bringing in changes. Because Bata has been there in, into the Indian market since 1931. And the brand has been an aspirational brand since then. It's going to be 100 years soon. So let's know from Gunjan what thoughts he has for Bata and how he became a retailer. So let's start. Hi Gunjan, welcome to ET Retail Cafe. We would love to know from you how your journey in retail started. Thank you so much Charu. Thank you for the introduction. It's my pleasure to be here with you and with ET Retail Cafe. Uh, so I think the journey with Bata started about a couple of years back, right? Uh, in fact, exactly a couple of years back, right? Uh, but otherwise, I have for the last two and a half decades been in consumer brands, in retail interfaces and uh, various stages and various categories, building and uh, growing brands all across. So, it's been a long journey and uh, the last couple of years has been obviously very interesting with Bata. So, so there. Uh, what did you study? I mean, were your aspirations always like to be into the retail industry? You wanted to do something else or retail happened by accident? We would love to delve deeper into it. You know, while accidents do present themselves at all junctures in life, right? And there are so many junctures where I can think of providence and, you know, uh, accidents as you rightly mentioned, right? But there are conscious choices that you make, right? At various junctures and crossroads. And I think in the case of my transition into Bata, I think uh, there were, you know, there were two or three things that were primarily there. I think one is obviously the brand, its legacy, the, the challenge of making sure a hundred year old brand stays relevant and, you know, uh, copes up with the consumers. And that's, uh, you know, that's an energizing thought by itself, right? And that was one big figure. I think the other piece that was there uh, was also the direct interface that you have with consumers with the exclusive uh, you know D2C setup that we have offline and online. So we cater to almost about a million plus some one and a half million consumers every every week right and we get direct consumer feedback, we get information about consumers, their choices, how they go about a decision tree in a store of ours. And that itself is, uh, you know, I think it's a monumental learning curve for me because hitherto while I have been in brands, but they were not necessarily a direct interface when they make the purchase decision. So I think a couple of these and many more, I think I've always tried to get out of comfort zone to try and learn new things, learn new business models, retail, exclusive retail, footwear, fashion, I think are very different business models and that itself I think is a learning curve. Learning continues in life always. You know, while I have obviously gone through a, a certain traditional, I would say middle class upbringing, right? Uh, my parents were basically uh, professionals, right? Uh, my mother was a housewife. I think uh, right from there you got a lot of, you know, those preliminary building blocks of your value systems, work ethic, etc. My father was a person that who did not know English, learned the first alphabet of English in the 8th standard, right? And within a few years, he entered into IIT, went into masters in US. So it just shows that, you know, with the right work ethic, with the right focus, anything is possible, right? And from there, obviously, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've changed many schools, right? Uh, I think that itself brings in a certain approach and a diversity of thought, etc. And from then onwards, obviously, to uh, graduation and then post-graduation, I started off with uh, with what I consider as a professional alma mater, which is Asian Paints, right? Uh, what lot of how I practice, how I go about doing my work, how I interact with my team members uh, around me 360, a lot of that core value systems and approaches, etc., problem solving has come from those initial uh, decade that I spent with this, uh, with Asian Paints. And from then onwards, obviously, I have had a long journey with uh, Britannia and uh, then onwards to now the last couple of years in Bata. So, consumer, uh, you have been the, into the consumer goods business from a way, for a very long time. How did you pivot to fashion and footwear? What excited you to change that uh, sector altogether? 
so uh, it's not just this this transition charu right uh, i have i have done different categories and different businesses right so it was paints decorative wall paints very different business very different uh, you know consumption occasion etc from a brand perspective right there i think middlemen were a very important part right contractors and painters etc then onwards to telecom where i spent a short stint and then obviously the foods industry which was there and then to footwear so one continuous strand strand towards through all this right has been a uh, challenging status quo and also getting out of comfort zone that is very very critical right uh, i firmly believe that learning is a very core part of your professional journey and learning is not necessarily only different kinds of roles but it is also different kinds of consumers different kinds of businesses and different kinds of operating models and cultures right so i think in that continuum is where this entire decision of also you know exposing myself to this entire fashion footwear retail uh, setup and uh, i think bata presented the perfect opportunity to give me a, a you know how do you say a triangulation of all of these So Bata has been an aspirational brand since 1931 and you have been into the business from a very long time into the retail industry what sort of consumer changes have you seen and how are you collecting them all together and bringing and adding to the consumer experience at Bata So uh, I think uh, it's been a it's been a you know how do you say an exciting journey the last couple of years and uh, no more less or no more because of the consumer changes and you know the consumer changes have happened over decades and they only get faster right uh, consumers are getting exposed to uh, you know trends world across right their access to media and access to all these trends is only going up with technology getting penetrated all across and it's only getting faster right so while if you look at a longer continuum i think there are so many changes that are there and you know it's uh, it's a tremendous achievement for a brand like bata to have stayed on top of that game over you know 9 decades right and closer to a century now uh, very few brands that i can think of across industries forget only footwear or fashion right which have stayed relevant over such long periods of time right and uh, within that i think in the recency phenomenon i think uh, you know while there was a big hiccup that got created because of covid and its disruption that it created but i think the longer term trends that we see is you know i think there is an ask for much better fashion much better style uh, as i said they seem to you know consumers are exposed to the world and therefore they want what they get offered in our stores in consonance with the global trends much faster in a in conjunction with that is i think a core which is getting manifested in our casualization and the synchronization in terms of product portfolio is style with comfort they are looking with style but they also want comfort right so i think these are the big t- trends that i can see and there are many more obviously so on on this journey you might be facing some challenges what are those challenges that you face how do you keep yourself motivated and what keeps you going uh it's a uh, it's a very uh, you know there are always challenges right and there are challenges you know as we speak right so uh, the challenges just change color right uh, there are uh, there are and they are not necessarily only adverse challenges there are also opportunities right and uh, if a brand wants to stay relevant you have to make sure that you are able to lead or make sure that you are moving in line with it hopefully ahead of the curve right uh, one of the you know immediate challenges that we see in the recent past has been basically inflation that has been one big challenge uh, it's been there all across the world all across various product categories and various inputs that we get into our products uh, so how do we make sure that we balance it right we make sure that the value for money equation for the consumer doesn't get distorted but simultaneously we are also able to make sure our profitability remains on track is one of those challenges i think another one that i can talk about which is a big opportunity i would say is this entire piece on i would say this and sit squarely where you know bata's key value proposition to consumer stands which is style with comfort consumers are looking for casualization they are looking for comfort but simultaneously don't want to compromise on style and i think this is something that we have done well in and uh, the you know the ask is on us to make sure that we keep up to that game on that So one thing we we observed that when covid came 
technology also became a challenge for many uh, retailers at that point of time but pata wonderfully what they did uh, i mean they were delivering at home the whatsapp uh, shopping was there many uh, new other initiatives was were also started so uh, that wasn't a challenge for ba bata exactly i mean no no absolutely and i think uh, you know what helped us navigate this entire thing and uh, i think the journey is still on there is a lot more that we can do on digitization and technology getting imbibed into not only the consumer interface but the way we operate itself right i think one of the things that helps is what i call as technology and you know uh, technological affinity right and that's a culture that we want to build across the organization i think the fact that we could grasp some of these fast and many of them have actually become signature initiatives some of them industry leading right is because we do carry naturally a certain amount of technology affinity what it means is that whatever irrespective of every employee and stakeholder whatever role that we do we need not be in the technology or the digital vertical but in whatever role that we do right we've got to have the affinity of what that technology can do for the role that i do what it can do for consumer what it can do for my stakeholders and how can i possibly leverage it right and that is what i mean by affinity i think that is something that uh, stands us in good stead and hopefully will portend well for the future also so technology is actually moving at a very fast pace in india when we talk about retail industry what if technology replaces your job what will you do do then i would love for the day to come <laughs> right and uh, i most probably will go i love adventure sports and i think i'll dedicate a lot more time to it i get to do it maybe once or twice a year i guess the frequency will go up charu right but uh, i think uh, you know on a slightly more serious note right uh, technologies will keep coming in right i mean there was a time when internet came in uh, there is a you know there is artificial intelligence that is coming in much more strongly now uh you know there is this entire piece on the speed of connectivity and therefore cloud based working right uh, which we can see progressing all across we see data penetration which has exploded in the last about a decade or at least 6 7 years right uh, all of these are mag are multiple magnitude of changes but that doesn't mean that you and me have no roles to do it's just that we have to reskill ourselves right and make sure that we stay relevant so just like as i mentioned brands have to stay relevant across decades even professionals all of us right in respect to what role that we do we need to make sure our skill sets also stay relevant and i guess that is something that should all keep us all sleepless at some point in time all the time so when you talk about the brands have to stay relevant bata has been rest bata has stayed relevant for almost a century now so what sort of values have been weaved into the employees that makes the ba that, that makes the brand bata bata actually uh i and hopefully for another century right uh, i think uh, you know the core ethos of the founders of bata right uh, starting with the original you know founder which is thomas bata who started it from czechoslovakia in 1930s thought about coming all the way to india and setting up the entire you know manufacturing and therefore then the consumer brand piece right i think right from there i think making sure that you know uh, we try and you know i think what matters is at all points in time are you connected to the consumer right consumers do evolve and it's important if brands want to stay relevant right are you making sure that you are making your right strategic choices and then putting all your effort and resources behind making sure that you follow through on those choices because you know strategy is as much about choices as much about the execution of what choices that you make right and i think that strand stands us uh, it's not as if you are always successful at it but as long as you have got 8 out of 10 right you will stay relevant and that's i think the key value that we would like to sustain if we want to stay relevant for the next century okay so what are the strategies that bata is uh, building to make the brand sustained for next 100 years okay next 100 years i don't think i can <laughs> comment uh, what i mentioned was that if the value system and the core belief right and therefore the culture that we imbibe in the organization remains that will keep us relevant over the next century the the opportunities the challenges the kind of uh, possible routes that you will take will keep changing with time and i i can only comment on the current kind of uh, priorities that we have uh what i think we seeing is that the first thing is making sure that the product portfolio moves in line with that 
Right. There are multiple levers of work that we are doing. I think, you know, uh, we've just mm -hmm. launched last year a product called Floats, right? It's, it's, a, it's a unique compound. It's got technology embedded in it. It basically is something that gives great comfort with a lot of style, as you can see. We are bringing in more technology in the way we are making it. Uh, but this is just one example of it. So basically making sure that if consumers want to have a certain kind of, uh, you know, a proposition, how are you making sure that you stay relevant? Similarly is the entire range that we have revamped in terms of sneakers, uh, making sure that the interface comes alive with consumers. Now we've got sneaker studios across almost 400 stores of us, right, and growing very fast. Uh, similarly is, you know, uh, various other technologies, we've got something called, that's called the bioprint that we've launched, which has got cork in it, right, that provides a certain amount of, you know, uh, comfort to your foot while you're using it. And I think the other big effort that we are putting in is basically in terms of uh, making sure that we leverage, I think, an area that we could have done much better is this entire occasion wear piece, right. Uh, making sure that women primarily, but even the men, we are able to give them offerings that can be proudly worn to occasions like weddings, etc. So all of these are pivots on the portfolio front. Similarly, there is a lot of effort that we want to put behind basically expansion, right? Uh, Bata's, uh, you know, our consumer research says that the brand equity is extremely high. It's one of the highest that I have seen across so many brands that I have handled and uh, seen over the years and making sure that we are available where the consumer wants us and wants like to shop and uh, therefore expansion through our franchise route, through our exclusive outlets, through multi-brand as well as the digital interface, all of it is going to be a big priority in this year and the coming years. Uh, last but not the least on the consumer front is going to be making sure that we keep on, we have started a very aggressive journey in terms of brand investments. Uh, making sure that we associate with the right kind of collaboration in terms of either celebrities or properties, etc. And therefore, make sure that the message of relevance of Bata as well as the kind of proposition that we are bringing in through our products, etc. comes alive to the consumers. So you're building a sustainable brand for, for centuries ahead. That way we can say, right? So, but when we talk about brands like Bata, they are focusing on the profit, profitability and sustainability. But when we talk about uh, the new age brands these days, they believe in disruption. What do you think is the right way for any business to go ahead? Is it, should it be the disruption way or it should be the profitability and scalability way? I think the, the, the secret to us, a long-term sustainable business, right, and therefore a relevant brand is a balance between the two at all points in time, right. Uh, you have to balance the short term and the long term. Uh, disruptions are critical. Disruptions are important. Uh, disruptions might not necessarily come only from within, right. Uh, disruptions are happening around us, right. Uh, some last for a short period of time and there are flash, some last for a longer. Uh, successful businesses are the ones that are able to basically discern between the former and the latter. And uh, once you are able to discern that, how fast you are able to latch on to the latter, which is the long-term sustainable disruptions, right? And not only in terms of product, but also in terms of operating models, in terms of technology, etc., which is becoming even more prevalent nowadays. I think that's the secret and the key, right? And uh, making sure that you are able to latch on to these trends early enough is where I think the secret lies. Uh, we, we look, you know, we, we, we love competition, we love the way they try and disrupt, they bring in new ideas, they bring in new uh, operating processes and all of this is something that uh, we, I would firmly believe and I would encourage any organization and Bata for sure, right, that we are open to, we learn from it and, uh, and hopefully we execute even better. So which is the next category that you are planning to disrupt now? Uh, I think uh, while we would like to make sure that the core remains footwear, there are areas that we are looking at. Within footwear, there are a multiple areas that we can see very clearly where technology can help us. Uh, besides that, I think adjacent areas where we can see that there is a certain, you know, as I said, there are a million plus consumers walking into our stores uh, every week, right? And how do we, how can we cater to their needs? So whether it's in terms of accessories, whether it's in terms of bags, uh, there's a huge uh, renovated and refreshed collection of ladies' handbags that we have launched and similarly even in terms of apparel is areas that we are looking at and which can propel us even further in terms of our growths.
we wish you all the best for the journey ahead. But before we wrap it up, we would love to have a rapid chat with you where I'll be asking a few questions from you and you have to answer it quickly without thinking much. I hope it's not going to be dangerous questions, but <laughs> no. more than game for it. Let's okay. Go. Uh, your favorite business book, uh, why do you like it? Uh, what have you learned from it? I, I love reading. Uh, it's it's one of my, you know, I, it's also a sleeping pill for me. So I can't go to sleep without reading. Uh, so I've obviously read a lot across fiction, non-fiction, etc. But in terms of your specific question of business book, I think one that comes immediately to mind is Good to Great. Right, by Jim Collins. I think, uh, you know, the reason that it stands is it basically is trying to address or at least cover the areas of, you know, why do big businesses, some of them fail and how some of them sustain, what makes them relevant across centuries and decades and therefore the entire piece of, as I said, strategic choices, uh, how do you stay relevant and then making sure that your execution and your focus and resources go behind those choices that you make. So, there you are. While working for Bata, I know you adore Bata, but one other retail brand or maybe the retailer that you admire a lot and why? Uh, I would say uh, what I've heard a lot about and I think I would like to understand it a lot more better etc. Uh, I think is Zara, right? It's a, it's a fast fashion retailer. It's created a position for itself in a very short period of time. And I think not only in terms of the way they present themselves to consumers, but the entire business model of how they operate, how they, how they show agility, how they track trends, and more importantly, let it filter through the entire supply chain and the value chain of the organization, and how they organize everything around it to make sure that the consumer sees actually that fast fashion come alive. I think is a very admirable quality, and I think there's something that we can learn from it, and I personally can also. So, uh, when people hear about Gunjan Shah, they know that Gunjan Shah is a retail professional, right? They don't know what Gunjan Shah d uh, does in his free time. So, what do you love to do in, in your free time? Uh, how do you engage yourself, keep yourself motivated? So, I, I, uh, so there are three, four things, right? Uh, I think one is that's been a long-standing trend, strand all across, right? Uh, has been that I, I love sports. Right, uh, I have to modulate my choices of sports with age. Right, uh, I I used to love contact sports earlier. Right, uh, and uh, nowadays I'm more into racket sports. Right, uh, but I fundamentally love sports in general. Right, and uh, I think in you know it's something that declutters my mind. It helps me focus. I played very competitively whichever sport that I do. And uh, and I think it just refreshes you. Right, it it pumps in the right kind of positive hormones through the system and I love that. As I said, reading is another piece that I, I can never give up, right? Uh, and uh, that is something that I have continued. Uh, I have tried to move to the digital reading, which is the Kindle, etc. But I still love the hardbacks, so the hard copies, right? So I, I still stay with paperbacks largely. The other piece that is obviously has been pretty dominant over the last about a decade in terms of leisure time has been family. Right, uh, my wife's been a great inspiration in terms of pushing me out of comfort zone at all points in time. Right, sometimes to my discomfort. Right, <laughs> but all for good. The other is obviously my kids. Uh, I love spending time with them. Now they have grown up, so you know now they are almost my peers, and you know interacting with them in in a peer format itself is a big uh, big re-energizer. Uh, re so there you are. Being in the retail industry, don't you like to shop? Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. But uh, my wife takes bulk of the share of that uh, energy on that front. So I am the one who's carrying the bags around all the time. So online or offline, what do you prefer for yourself and why? I think online's got a lot of convenience, right? But if you want uh, retail therapy, I personally feel that offline is what does that the best, right? But yes, for convenience, there's nothing that beats the online world. So I think it's it's always going to be a balance and most probably that's how it's going to pan out, for me at least. How do you see the retail industry changing going ahead? I don't claim to be a, you know, a, a, a prophet in terms of trying to project the future, but I think it's, uh, it's going to be a continuous evolution. We see a lot of changes, especially in the last, let's say, two, three years, right? Uh, we saw Omni Channel pick up big time. And I think that trend is there to, there to stay and hopefully only gain momentum. 
consumers want to see this balance they want to see the entire as i said the entire interface the love of having a look around the love of uh, you know you know uh, interacting with let's say the sales person in the shop explaining to them etc but simultaneously they carry inherently now more and more a technology interface and therefore how do we build a seamless experience for consumers i think is going to be one long standing trend i think besides that uh, there is a certain organization of retail that is happening more and more so from an india perspective and i think that trend will also continue so we will see a lot more lot better stores much better lit much better technology in them a much more attractive uh, you know the way the stores present themselves and therefore hopefully compete in terms of attracting consumers into the stores thank you so much for your time gunjan it was pleasure talking to you over today same year it was a pleasure and uh, it's lovely and look forward to uh, interacting with you soon again uh, thank you guys for watching et retail cafe we'll be back again next week with another retailer another brand another story until then keep waiting bye